Hey Villa fam, welcome back to season three of Honest Conversations with Two Village Girls. I'm Serena. I'm Angie. This season, we are focusing on all of the common questions we've been asked about the specific child behaviors. This week, we are answering the question, why is my child being picky about what they eat? This is going to be a fun one. Yeah, this is going to be fun because we're talking about picky eaters and your girl, she very picky. But I'm just joking. Your girl, girl, Angie. Well, yeah, I am picky, guys. You, you're picky sometimes. I am. Sometimes. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> but, yeah, we're here talking about, you know, why my child may be picky about what he or she eats. Yep. Um, First and foremost, what we want to say, because we, we've been talking about, like, in each episode, how we are not professionals. Yeah. We just go off of what we've learned from, like, our degree paths and our certifications Mm -hmm. and our experiences so first and foremost if you have concerns about your child's eating habits or any or their diet or anything talk to your child's doctor first yeah absolutely so that being said go ahead angie so sometimes children may not want what you make them of course um and you know sometimes that can be a little frustrating because you know, sometimes as parents, they might look at it as <laughs> the child being ungrateful or, mm-hmm. you know, when I was actually, when I was growing up, um, I don't really think I was, um, my parent made me eat, but we did have to eat. We couldn't leave the table without finishing our plate and stuff like that. But now forcing a child to eat what's on that plate, I wouldn't do. You wouldn't do it? I wouldn't do it. Like, I feel as though, like, you have to, like, like we're saying, children have to get, you know, familiar with new foods and it's going to take multiple times Mm -hmm. for them to get used to that food. But I don't, if, I feel like if my child don't want it, then they just don't want it. True. I mean, it makes sense. The, the, uh, our, you know, the generation before this or the the generation that raised us. Mm-hmm. they made us they made us sit down to eat us our food we had to eat out finish our plate um we didn't really have no other options of what to eat like we had to eat what was cooked what was made there's nothing else oh we I just agree with that starve. well I agree like eating what's like on the plate like you definitely like I don't think anyone recommends like making your child a new plate of food if they're a picky eater like making yeah. them a whole different meal mm-hmm. I don't think I've seen anything that's like, oh my gosh, you should do this to make sure they're eating. But like you were saying, it takes like a certain amount of exposures to a new food to really get an idea of whether the child likes it or not. Yeah. Because it, the first time they see it, it might just be that the, it looks weird. Mm-hmm. It smells weird. Or just like they don't, like it's a new taste. It's unfamiliar. So they don't like immediately like draw a connection yeah, to it. That's true. Like most kids automatically draw a connection to sweets, but like mm-hmm. for those veggies or different fruits to be like they don't want it yeah it's just not what they're like like it doesn't automatically have that sweet factor Mm -hmm. yeah um so like giving them like a a number of opportunities to try the food but after a certain point don't force it don't force it (laughs) because at that point they really just don't like it yeah after you try multiple times yeah like what else can you do after you try over and over again to nothing with that food they're telling you they're letting you know that they don't like it at that point one thing that I talked I talked about this with my mother-in-law actually Mm -hmm. um because my husband he has like a lactose thing Mm -hmm. and at some point because you know like babies they need milk so obviously we know like milk is good for babies and and like young toddlers they need that those vitamins and nutrients that come from milk just like starting out Mm -hmm. at some point when my husband was able to talk as a baby when he reached that age he was like mommy I'm not doing it anymore I don't like it Mm -hmm. I don't want it and the doctor's biggest like recommendation was like okay they don't have to drink milk he can just like give him things that have like the same nutrients Nutrients, as milk so like cheeses pizza Mm -hmm. um, mac and cheese like those different variations that have the same vitamins or has milk in it but is not directly milk yeah like there are loopholes to bringing these like different nutrients in Mm -hmm. without just force feeding you know your string beans or your broccoli (laughs) or whatever have you another way to get children to enjoy food or Mm -hmm. enjoy the things that you're making is to make it fun don't just say don't like 
children like to have fun so oh, yeah. if you make it to like a play thing or like oh let's taste this together maybe this tastes good or make it exciting for them to want to eat maybe that'll um help them to you know eat different foods different foods yeah yeah when you make it a game make sure the game just doesn't encourage them to continue eating when they've they've expressed like their full Mm -hmm. their tummy hurts or anything like that because the last thing you want to do is make them sick over some broccoli like they can eat the broccoli for lunch or for Mm -hmm. dinner later save it for a snack like just make sure when playing these games that they're able to say when they're ready to stop or when they're done or when they just don't want to like they want to try different foods um and make sure you're not bribing them that's important because there's a lot of people that are like if you finish your broccoli you will get ice cream Mm -hmm. yeah because when you bribe the kids they're not that's essentially in the same realm as forcing them to eat yeah because they're not eating it takes away from them eating and learning to enjoy the foods and really like taste testing the foods yeah because now they're not they're just like forcing it down so they get to the the good stuff to the ice cream that's what Mm -hmm. they want Plus, they'll remember that. Kids remember what, what like, attention they get for, like, doing certain things. Yeah, they might remember, like, oh, if I eat my dinner, I'm going to get ice cream again, like, today. And then suddenly, you eat, buy an ice, ice cream, cream every, every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need that. Mm-hmm. All those sweets. Yeah. Having picky eaters can be frustrating because we don't really know when it starts. There's no real pinpoint of, like, that's true. When did we start noticing this or like are we allowing the kids to be picky eaters because I don't think it's that either what do you think I think it probably start once they get older and and are able to communicate Mm -hmm. that they don't want it maybe then true maybe like um how old what age when they start talking one Mm -hmm. one two three something like that one or two yeah maybe at that age when they start are able to you know communicate that they don't want certain things or that they don't like certain things yeah I saw something that said, like, it's about control when the picky eating can start. Like, this is when they they learn that they can say, no, thank you. I don't want more. And like, like you said, when they start talking, Mm -hmm, it becomes a control thing when they start being picky because then they realize like, oh, I can say, like, I've got the autonomy to say, Mm -hmm. I don't like this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, sometimes children might just say they don't want it just because. Or they don't like it just because, too. Mm-hmm. It's not appealing to the eye that day. <laughs> yeah. No, they just want something else. They're, li- they're little humans, too. Oh, yeah. Little, little people. And they know. They know what they, they want and they out. know what they don't want. <laughs> but what did your parents do for you when you were picky? I mean, I feel like my grandma really, when my grandma really, really didn't have a choice to be really picky because she cooked and honestly we just had to eat what she cooked and a lot of times we really couldn't even get up from the table like I was saying earlier we couldn't mm-hmm. even get up from the table if I you know we, would, we didn't finish our plate or drink mm-hmm. but a child child I don't remember you know when I was a child child you know little little but I do remember those things I think that's a good point though like even if the kids don't eat like making sure they they know that they can't just leave the table I like that like knowing that regardless of if you eat what's on your plate or not, mm-hmm. like dinner time is from X o'clock to X 30, yeah. whatever. And we all sit at the table because mm-hmm. at some point they'll, they'll try the food at least. Yeah. Cause they just, they don't got nothing else to do, but sit there. They're going to be looking at it the whole time. Mm-hmm. It was going to be cold though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cold food is better than no food, but it depends. I don't know. Are you forced to eat? Um, was I forced to eat? I guess not really. I, I had limited options anyway. Like we ate the same like food groups regularly, but like, I, I don't think I was given alternatives either though. I guess like, like I'm in the same boat as you. We had a, like, this was the meal for the day. Mm -hmm. And these were like your food groups. You'd have to eat the, at least some of the vegetables. Yeah. I was never forced to like finish the plate, mm-hmm. but if I'd like, I'd have to eat at least half of the vegetables or half of the, like the healthy part. In addition, my biggest thing was like, I, I used to try and like eat one 
of the food groups at a time. Oh, okay. And I and I would like fill up on like the yeah. the meat and mm -hmm. the rice and not the vegetable. So it was like I had to like mix my Dang. food basically. Do you still eat your food one at a time like that? No, not as much. But I also like I mix my food now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, well, kind of, I guess. Like anyway. I used to be big on like sep like my foods couldn't separate, touch. Yeah. Like everything had to be separate. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would like scarf down like one thing at a time and be like oh you know I can only eat like two vegetables I never eat like that. but it, I don't know why it was just I guess a strategy at the time so I began eating like my vegetables mm -hmm. along with my foods yeah. and eventually like I like a whole bunch of like different vegetables now like I'm an asparagus person a brussels sprouts person yeah I know you guys can't see it but Angie's making a stink face at me yeah, those <laughs> things are nasty. I'm a very, very, very picky eater. I don't know when I started either, guys, but I don't know. I feel like I ate, I ate pretty decently when I was younger, and mm -hmm. like I, I guess I'm, I'm used. I was used to what my grandmother made, and you know, once you leave out of there, I was, I, I'm, I guess I'm not the type of person to be trying new things, new foods, especially if I haven't tasted it before. I, I'm, I, I automatically assume it's going to be nasty. <laughs> because oh I know my I know my taste but so I just be turning stuff down and then we went on a cruise and I had Angie try all the different foods they offered except and she for the liked duck. some except for the duck I did not try that I don't know who wants to eat a duck but we working on her villa fam <laughs> we working on each other yeah. but yeah play around with it take your time let your kids limit test and remind them that you want what's best for them Mm -hmm. Absolutely. that's basically what it boils down to yeah you want them healthy okay Villa fan thanks for tuning in again to another episode with two village girls please subscribe to our channel if you are new if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them down below also go ahead and hit the bell to get notified when new videos drop please follow us on all our social medias which will be listed in the description box below and as always, we want to send you out with some positive vibes to get you through the rest of your week. This week's inspirational quote is by John Jack Wosu, who says, patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Thanks, Villa fam. Bye. Bye.